I was thinking about it, even in terms of our conversation today, like, you know, the, the refrain is really like, no justice, no peace. And it's like the, the, the folks that like stability and order and sameness and all are going to have to get used to, you know, what, what we know of, which is like creative uh, emergence is also chaos. And so the yeah. ability to recognize that creative force that also is chaos and really be ready for that and build that into our systems, you know, on the individual and societal level is, is a thing. So. Yeah, it's huge. And I mean, it's so this, and we are in such a profoundly creative moment because we're in the unknown. And then, and, and then when, as I hear how eloquently it's, you know, obviously I'm listening to a lot of artists, a lot of musicians, a lot of watching dancers interpret it and a lot of music and a lot of what's beautiful here is um, our storytelling uh, is limited in relation to minority groups, in relation to what we see in the theatre, in relation to even what we see in our screens. Um, and just there was a beautiful young actress on about the fact that she writes you know, she, she writes so that she can see her story told and that she can be seen on stage and that there's more diversity in stories told. Mm. Um, and I feel that since my actors have started working with organic intelligence with their creative process, I find a lot more diversity and their ability to be in character in a much more complex way, in a much more compassionate, empathetic way is much richer. So even characters that are, that on the page appear, oh, you know, I'm not too sure. You know, what is the story there? What's the root of the story there? They're bringing their own complexity to it because they have access now to that complexity, and and I, I I'm just blown away by um, how much richer the storytelling is. And then we we talk a lot about, you know, we need a new kind of storytelling now. We need a more inclusive storytelling. As so for a very long time, we've had a particular gaze and we've been seeing the world through particular stories. Um, but until our systems change, which is where I feel organic intelligence is just extraordinary, um, we're not going to be able to find the invisible voice of that. You know, I'm listening to all these extraordinary, like really eloquent, articulate young people um, talk about race and talk about how they've struggled, but they have the language for it. Right? Right. You the know, they have this so extraordinary, clear. robust yep. language for it. Yep. Yep. The analysis is so clear and the and the and the clarity just reveals sort of the like the blinders that have been on to this point. Like, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. How do, how was that missed? And also that sense of what I, what, you know, it's the same thing with the creative process is how do you speak from experience in the moment without using the language of fixing and solving, without using the language of solution, without using the language of right and wrong, you know, so much of what I'm, and that's why the voice right now that I'm, I'm feeling is, wow, this is a, a deeply creative and compassionate voice because it's just asking to be seen for being human and like it's oh, it's so powerful and and that is completely the work of an actor mm. you know how do you put yourself in the story of another and you know the autonomic nervous system if i call that this where all creative impulse comes from and that unconscious creative self emerges and like artists you know we feed stories to that nervous system and from feeding those stories we create something and if the the artist is really there and present. Oh, people coming in and out of my room now. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not coming That's in and out of my room. Good. Sorry. <laughs> I, I thought I was quiet now. But I can see you. Oh, you have to hope. It is like an entire house. Yeah, like with house eight bedrooms. In indeed. Indeed. And you have Bye. five possessions. I have the dog. The dog. Hi. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> It's really funny. Like uh, there's like loads of rooms in this house. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> you, um, what you were saying also just reminded me about the, the whole question of empathy is this as this core uh, ask 
of the moment. Like, let's let us feel some kind of access to care. And and I'm thinking about that as you're talking about acting in a way that's that's something of the essence of the actor's work is the depth and complexity of empathy for the character. But empathy as a whole is like the tool that we we need as well to be able to make societal shifts. It's, it, yeah. And, and that's really interesting because what I have found, and again, it's why introducing the OI work to my actors has been a game changer, is that often my actors don't know how not, not that they, they're empathetic with everything. And they've no, there's no distance between often themselves and the character or themselves and another. So, and what I found is with bringing in the channels of, of image, sensation, orientation, meaning, affect, which are channels we've always worked with, but to bring them in through pleasure and play and on that very conscious level, I find they can build this compassionate space, which is bigger than their empathetic space. So it's almost like this huge container. And, and, and what's fascinating about it is they're now beginning to feel emptiness and spaciousness, which usually for the actor is, oh my God, I'm not going to be interesting. Uh, they're, but they're really beginning to see it as, wow, it's, that's the unknown. That's that profound place from which my character emerges. Oh, and I can feel all these sensations and emotions and images, and then meaning comes to me. Because with acting, meaning's the last thing. Like you want to go into scene, you want to be in discovery, and then afterwards you figure out the meaning. But if you go in with meaning, it's already too late. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's, there's something, yeah, that the, the empathy for an actor can, can lead to fragility and, and even paranoia as they move on, if they don't have the compassionate space. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess that's how, that's how I see, see them as, oh, okay. There's this huge space. And then inside that you can be anybody you want. You can go anywhere you want. Imaginatively. Yeah. Imaginatively. I stress. Not personally. I got you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm just thinking about, again, the, the connection between the actor's process and the movement of societal change and the, the uh, protest for change. And just the, the notion of recognition, like emptiness and not knowing, then is this open, fertile field from which, you know, wisdom can arise. Uh, yeah, and a complete shift happens because you're starting to realize, oh, and also a different listening happens because then, you know, for the creative process and intuition, fundamentally the first skill is that of listening and can I listen to myself while I listen to you can I allow the story go through me and allow the story inform me rather than assume the story so that if again in our current situation can I really just listen and be affected and, and with my own biases with my own judgments with my own complexity because exactly the same for car for an actor they go in a story hits them their own bias their own judgment comes up but if you just feel it in a sensational way in an emotional way you include that all in the complexity of your performance so this yeah. this this extraordinary moment that we find ourselves in and i'm not like even this morning in my meditation i was going okay so the pandemic the coronavirus was about taking our breath away and now you know, the civil rights movement has started in America and, and the chant is to do with breath, you know, and, and that we've been moving in the last 10 years towards talking about, you know, mindfulness and, you know, it's become something so popular, but it's like this idea of intuition that, that it knew we were going to need this moment. And it feels like, oh, this moment is about breathing. Yes. Can we just breathe in and out with right. one another and just listen? Right. For those of us who genuinely don't know what it feels like to be yeah. an African American in America, you know, and then it's set this, you know, uh, this, these lights up all over the world and, and brought this conversation that, right. that, that I know that the community already have been speaking amongst themselves, but now of the language to be really eloquent about it in a way that I don't think I'd even be eloquent about my own 
complexity and struggles. So it's really, it's fascinating to me. Well, and especially if you've got this framework that you're talking about, which is kind of a, a rest, uh, um, we'll say not a recipe, but like uh, an inner alchemy for listening. Like mm. what, what are the components? What are the, what are the conditions? What are the attitudes that create the space really for being affected and thus listening to really be able to listen? Yeah. It's, it, that, cause, and it's, it's, cause we, we talk about the fact that act, you know, acting is just listening and that it's, it's an embodied listening. So you're not listening with your ears. You're actually listening with your body and you're, you're, you're noticing a lot of the time in the beginning, people have to work a lot with this inner circle of how is my body experiencing this moment? So that's, what's beautiful about doing all the orientation work. Okay. What's happening there? How do I describe that? And in the beginning, if the body's overwhelmed, then I work a lot with, you know, this sense of, of working with pleasure and play and, and like, and, 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 and then we move into something more uncomfortable, but once the system is primed for pleasure and playfulness, and it feels stable in its environment and it's, it's, it has the ability to listen in that way. And when they bring in a scene partner, then the listening to this, we talk about, you know, in, in the voice work as well, that all voice comes from an alive alert stillness. Mm. And actually my reason to speak has already built up inside me energetically and I've, I've experienced and been affected and that's my impulse to speak so that then when I do, and that alignment between, I see my scene partner, I notice how I'm being affected and I acknowledge anything. It doesn't matter. Even if it feels, why is this in scene at the moment? You go, okay, it's, it's arrived. I've no idea why it's here. It's both, but you, you go, okay, that's what's here. You speak from there. And then the scene moves on and you're listening to what's happening in the scene rather than doing anything. Right. Right. Yeah. And then at the end of it, we're doing the same thing. We work from the body. So what, what happened there? What did you discover? It's about what did you discover about the story? What did you discover about the relationship? Right. Rather right. than feeling, I have to know what I'm doing in this moment. No, you don't. You just have to listen in this moment, but you have to be informed about the story. Yes. It's a little bit like right now, we need to know the history. We need to understand. And then our listening takes on a whole other quality. Right. Rather like than there's listening a, from like there's a trigger. Like there's a context or a, a container, really, then that the current moment can reside in that holds for us, you know, this, uh, this place, this context, this connection. Really. Yeah. And, and the story is so important. Like the story right now is really important for us all and also the gift that we've been given to to take on another history another culture and really all we're being asked is we just want your empathy like that's so profound because if we manage that that's so healing yeah for, for us all like because that's the kind of listening that is truly creative that is truly innovative that is truly oh okay now there's we can, we, this is an embodied experience of equality. This is an embodied experience of uh, diversity. It's not just an intellectual concept that I've, you know, written a PhD on and I can talk a lot about it academically. No, I actually feel it in the presence of another. Mm -hmm. And again, that's something that we work a lot on is the sense of no matter who is in the room, you need the, the sense of feeling have a sense of self where you feel you're with equals no matter how prestigious the director or the actor or whatever it is you're working and and because only there can there really be a kind of true conversation happening irrespective of your age and your experience yes um, yeah no mm. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, like, uh, that we're just in the early parts of this conversation and, and, uh, and just the wisdom of saying, uh, yeah, we begin with listening. We begin by understanding context and learning the history and, 
And uh, I've heard, I've heard so many people just say, it's a step in the direction, like already there is built in somehow this acknowledgement, like, it's going to take you all a little while to catch up, you know, and there's a process, you know, you, you don't, you don't sort of come to uh, equality and, and recognition and uh, awakeness all at once. Uh, but that there is this process and that, that emerging that can happen on the way to, you know, going from listening, understanding, uh, alliance and uh, support, you know, to really dismantling then the structures that, you know, the system has, has placed like, you know, a, a knee on, on the throat of, uh, you know, our, our people of color. Yeah. 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 Uh, and it, because that way our systems get the space and chance to yeah to discover something we, we, we didn't we didn't even think about before yeah to experience something we didn't even oh, okay that wasn't in my imaginative process so I, I i never imagined that before and also just the amount of clarity around the story if we say the storytelling that's coming out of this crisis you know this movement um and and it's the in, and it's the interesting thing about an, when an individual story is authentic there's no generalities in the storytelling yet to the listener there's an enormous deep resonance yeah, so, yeah. so that this communal, you know, I think a lot of time language, we try and find a, a communal language and it's not about a communal language. That's not what connects us. It's actually one person's story being really authentic and human and connected. And in detail, absolute detail can be so, is so moving for us because mm -hmm. it resonates with our hu humanity right. and our empathy and our compassion. And again, that that relationship with creativity is really about ten thousand intimacies you know that abhi shanti when he talks about that um that the more nuanced and intimate you are in in your creation the more it's going to resonate with authenticity with the listener and and the system of the other so i, I see it like a mandala you know that that you're working with story and you're really going into moments like even with the act, my actors they read a story and i say just one moment i just need you to resonate with one moment through the whole book resonate yeah. in a meaningful way. you don't have to understand it you don't have to you just need and then you take that one moment that you connect to and you build a belief around that moment and you work into that moment until you feel a response in your body. And then when you read it again, five or six other moments have pinged as resonance. So there's something about that that I feel when we're listening to others, it's just one, one moment of, that, that can bring us to each other. Yes. And then we get to reflect on that. Right. And yeah. You know the uh, the potency of narrative and story and uh, and just your brilliant sort of integration of all of this offers such a, such amazing resource and 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 I think also uh, just a curiosity about about the the cultural context for you the the Irish culture you know there really has so much about story story and music and tale and and the written word and poetry uh, how is it that you think like your work is also being supported uh, by by that that cultural stream as well how do you do you have you thought about that or yeah i mean i think that's it it's really interesting that when I trained a very long time ago, um, I was trained in quite a conventional initially training where I think we, we all learned received pronunciation and um, I had an amazing acting teacher who loved language and she was a writer. Um, but I felt the explore and she was amazing with voice as well. But there was something about it that I went, no, that, that there's more to this and it was to do with the breath. I felt the way we were being taught the breath was so, so structured. I had gone in 
to drama school and I was told you really, you could just go out there and get a job now, or you, you could go train and have the craft. And I wanted the craft because I felt too vulnerable. It felt too exposed. I mean, if I don't have some structure around me, I'm going to fall apart out there because I feel too, I feel so much. Mm. And there, then this relates to in Ireland, there's so much nonverbal. There's so much about, and I think it's to do with moving from the English language to the Irish language to the English language, that it often felt for me that the English language doesn't quite cut it to express how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> there was something about, there's something deeper that I can't express in these mere words and I think that's where our music has come from our desire for metaphor and our desire for poetry in particular because it, it feels the more I do this I go ah because like British English and American English feels so different to me and and it feels like another language to me so that I when I come to British English and American English and more so American English I have to do a lot of listening before it resonates in my body before I kind of figure out and and I kind of which was because I have a lot of American colleagues and I would have been taught Fitzmaurice voice work and Catherine has been 40 years in the states so I remember having this dilemma going why is this so tricky for me and I think it was very much to do with being Irish trying to find a voice as an Irish person that felt like it was my voice but that it wasn't about the words, it was about what was beneath the words. And it felt most natural when it was in metaphor, mm. or it was song, or yeah. it was unsaid, even. Yes. It was just unspoken. So really interest, like really, and it's like even when I train actors from different cultures, I would I say to my Irish actors, you know, you're driven by sensation. This is not, the emotional channel is not something, unless it's really intense and it's coming from a place of ferociousness, this more subtle emotional <laughs> experiences aren't so available, but the sensational channel is hugely open. Mm -hmm. So the ability to look into the environment and see beauty and recognize nature, that that, um, and be silent with it and sit with this. I, I, I certainly feel for me, and I think that's what drew me as a, at a very young age to meditation, was I'd moved from the countryside to the city and I was looking for the same experience because I'd drawn, grown up with the ocean as my mirror. I'd grown up with this expansive landscape that was quite rough and raucous and, you know, and then I went to the city. So I think what drew me to meditation was when I went into meditation i then felt like i'd feel when i'd look at the ocean right so so because the, the landscape is so much to do also with what we talk about in ireland you know we're obsessed with the landscape we're obsessed with the weather we're obsessed with the seasons you know it's 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 not just uh, a stereotype we love talking i could talk about a tree for ages you know it's just really interesting Right. So I definitely think that culture of language and music, it's almost like, it's like a real need. It's like, I need this to, to, um, continually discover who I am in, 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 in a sense. Yeah. Right. The sense too of, uh, the discovery coming back and, and really, really practically this, uh, somehow embedded in the culture is this, readiness for the arc some what Jung would call this archetypal level to speak that is there's the ocean and you understand somehow the spirit of that elemental force is is coming forward in poetry and re reflection and inflection and the experience of this elemental force and then to bring that into language to bring that into conversation yeah let's talk about the ocean we we understand about waves and tides and well all of a sudden we are no longer just talking about that body of water over there and that that bridge that's available that you get in culture that says oh how am i going to make the bridge between the material and the immaterial. And, and that's mm. some of what I'm hearing when you're speaking like this. 
Yeah, that's beautiful. Because hearing you speak now, like the images that are coming up are, you know, fishermen in boats and like so much historically was around um, the land and the sea and our survival was based on the land and the sea. Um, and, the, and, and that sense of time, having so much time and emptiness um, and, and, and clearly uh, a lot of suffering, that, that the lift came from the storytelling and the music. And then way before that, clearly you have more the Celtic tradition, which in a really interesting way, there's a lot of shamanism and kind of mud huts and all these things in the last decade have started to kind of sprout up all over the country, mm -hmm. that and ayahuasca. Um, but it's really interesting. And I certainly can feel that shift um, in people connecting back to something way earlier like yeah. way earlier and looking to the roots of which is what's fascinating about what's happening in America. It's like right now. And I was speaking to a friend from Australia who said, you know, the Aboriginal community in Australia now are coming out as a result of what's happened in America and trying to find their voices. And I, it, I was saying, you know, it's like we need to go that far back and remember this history so that we can, rediscover our roots all of us yeah because we've all been basically uprooted in a sense yeah we, yeah we have yeah and uh to get back in that family tree until we get back to you know the the roots where we are all in that common soil you know we are all there um, yeah and that you know because you know when you talk a lot as well about that sense of tribe you can really feel especially during the pandemic like how it has brought families together, communities together. You know, everybody's on a bicycle. People I've never seen. You know that person's never been on a bicycle before. And there's no bicycles to be bought in the country. Rollerblades are out. Trampolines are gone. You know, it's just extraordinary. But that people slowing down to a pace of life where they're going, what were we doing? Yes, yes. And what shall we do now? Yeah. That's super interesting. And yeah. um, so uh, let me just say to people that uh, we are, we have begun this first conversation and I hope you'll join us for our next conversation that Elena and I will be having, and that'll be in our clinical mindfulness course. And just to say, thanks Elena for joining us. And so looking forward to our next conversation as well. Yeah. Super. Thank you. Thank you.